Hello lovely viewers, you are live right here on the African Forza and I am Thomas Panford. Today we are coming to you live from the Delish restaurant where we are not going to be eating, we are going to be doing some talking. I have a colleague and a friend of mine here from the diaspora and she's in Ghana. I don't know what she's doing here but I've seen her nosing around small small so I want to know the real reason why she's here in Accra. But before that let's go for a short break. We'll be right back. Ghana de toko, Ghana kasao, Ghana kasao, Ghana de toko, Ghana kasao, Ghana kasao, Ghana de toko, Ghana kasao, Ghana kasao. Okay, back from that quick break. Um, I don't know whether I should say, but I'll say, I'll say, you know, this is, let me speak a little bit like that. I'll say, 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 I'll it's a mixture of the two because I don't want any trouble. So hello, Trula. Hi. Trula. Trula. Hmm. The name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit about Trula, her schooling, where she grew up. Yeah. Okay, so see your country and I'm in front of Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my name is Trula Varhan. Yeah. Um, I was born in America and I was raised there, but I was brought to Ghana when I was um, a little kid. So I stayed in Ghana until I was like five, six, and then I went back to the States. And I did my formal education there, did a college. I got my bachelor's um, in journalism and media studies from Michigan State University, Go Green. And yeah, so in between that time, I did a lot of um, different jobs that relates to media and communications. I worked at a radio station for about four or five years as a on-air talent and producer. Okay. Um, I also worked as like a communications director for a nonprofit, and then my most recent position was in public relations. Um, so yeah, and I'm current. Well, I was. I just took a quick break, um, doing my master's in strategic communication and leadership. It's like a PR route, but okay. I don't know. Still about. Uh, that's nice. Wow. You didn't graduate for five years. Yeah. Ah, I did it for only one year. Really? <laughs> yeah, didn't I didn't like really. it. <laughs> it's not like I didn't like it, but uh, I prefer TV. So, how was, you know. Let me, let me just shift the conversation. How was growing up, like when you came to Ghana, you were born there and came to Ghana, how did you see that like then, or oh, you can't really recall it? So I remember, I actually remember bits and pieces of my experience as a kid. Um, I remember walking to school with a big old backpack. I remember crossing like, um, you know, in between the gutters they have like a board. I remember crossing that. I remember getting lashed in school um, for not doing my homework. And I remember- uh, Is it my, outside or? Here. <laughs> That's what I remember. <laughs> And it's kind of traumatizing, but <laughs> um, yeah, so I remember that. Um, that's about it. I just have bits and pieces of, of it. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. So, um, comparing schooling abroad, schooling in Ghana, which one do you, well, did you really like? I haven't. My schooling in Ghana wasn't enough for me to have an opinion. Okay. Um, but from my experience, like the friends that I have that came from Ghana and went to school with me, they were always smarter than the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are definitely always smarter. And more disciplined and more focused, yeah. More disciplined? Mm. From Ghana? Yeah. Wow. This they is meant thumbs up for Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. That's very nice. So, what, what actually motivated you to go on that career path of being a journalist? Oh, mm. um, okay, honestly, when I was a kid, I was watching Oprah Winfrey. Show. Sure. Yeah, cool. Oprah Winfrey cool. Show. Okay. And immediately, like, something lit up, and it was just like, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And um, that happened twice with that and then with cooking. So, those two things are my passions. Um, so after that, yeah. Okay, we'll go there, don't worry. Okay, yeah, we'll go. <laughs> um, so after that, um, I was just like, okay, like, I'm gonna have my own talk show one day. I'm just, this is media, I guess. I didn't know there was a name for it. Okay. And then when it was time for me to go to college, my parents wanted me to do journal, um, 
uh, medicine. They wanted me to be a doctor. And I hate blood. Like, they, they know I'm really smart. That's why they were like, you can succeed in this. And I probably could have, but there was no passion there, no nothing. Um, so I changed my major, second year of college, to journalism. And actually before that, when I was applying to schools, the school that I wanted to go to, Michigan State, I got deferred, which means like they didn't accept me right away. Okay. They told me that they wanted to see my grades progress over a semester of like high school. Okay. So I was like, okay. So when I got that deferment, I'm like, God, I really want to go to the school. Like, if this is what you want me to do, if you want me to pursue journalism, like, let me get in, let me get in. Um, so yeah, I got in, and so I was like, all right, so I'm on the right path. And yeah, I was successful in my like classes um, that related to like writing, creativity, media, and then I was a part of this organization on campus for women empowerment. And we were going to do a radio broadcast at like the local broadcasting station. Okay. So while I was there, I was talking to the um, like the manager or something, and we did like sound bites, like "Hey, this is da 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 da," and he was like, "Hey, you're pretty good." And I was like, "Yeah, I think I wanted to try this." And he was like, "Yeah, there's an internship you want to apply," and I applied and I got it. And then after my internship, they hired me. And then so on and so forth. And then five years later, I was like, okay, it's time for me to take the next step. Thank you. And you are here with us. And she's not going back. <laughs> we are keeping her. Fingers crossed. Yeah. But, you know, your parents wanted you to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. You don't like blood. No. So you said, no, I want to be a journalist. So who, who has had an impact on your career path? Uh, or who's your role model? Let me see, who's your role model when it comes to journalism? When it comes to journalism, I would say, so the term journalist is not what I subscribe to. Like, I know what that means, right? But when people think of journalists, it's the whole reporting thing. So I did courses in college that was like reporting. And for me, it was more in, like news reporting, things like that. I was more entertainment. I was more like... Lifestyle. Yeah, lifestyle, like having fun. Um, so, I would say Oprah, because her talk show was structured in a way where it wasn't like just news. She had, sometimes she had influential people come and talk about important things. Okay. She would have celebrities come and talk about things that they were they had going on. She would get personal, she would get, um, she would talk about beauty, she would talk about food. It was just like, no box. And that's what I think I, I, I see myself as. I don't, I don't fit into a box. Okay. Yeah. So you decided to go out of the box. Yeah. That's very nice. Now, you were talking about cooking. You said you also loved cooking. Yeah. So are you a chef? <laughs> <laughs> Unofficial official chef, yes. Unofficial official <laughs> chef. In whose restaurant or whose kitchen? Julep's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So why are you in Ghana? Are you here for vacation or you're here to work or because I me mean, I don't know anything, so I'm just asking. Why are you in Ghana? So initially I came to Ghana um during Dutty December. Um I came twenty twenty one and that one was like family. I met family for the first time, like some extended family. So I came back this year for my sister's wedding and after that, I was staying with a friend in Accra, and then at my auntie. And then as like the days kept going, I kept having a good time, and it just kept meeting amazing people. And I'm like, I don't really want to go back. Yeah, because prior to, I was in Indonesia for six months, and mm -hmm. developing nations are so So I got acclimated to that kind of environment and lifestyle. So when I came here, it was just like normal. I was already used to it. So I was like, I love this like, peaceful, slow-paced life for most of America's like, hustle culture. And yeah, and I was scrolling on Instagram, somebody posted, Accra Times is hiring like, uh, reporters, blah, 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 and I was like, I'm here, might as well just do something to occupy my time. Okay. And here we are, like, it's been an amazing experience, I'm so grateful. So what's so amazing about Ghana that you don't want to go back, you want to stay here in Ghana? Is it the, wait, 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 is it the food, is it the gentleman, is it the culture, 
or is it our, our beach which is it for some people for some guys that i've met they say oh the ladies are nice some ladies say oh the guys are nice and some other people say the food is nice so you okay what is keeping you list. here long list let's go let's i go. love ghana uh -huh. and it's so crazy when i tell people that they're like why do you love ghana like people that live in ghana ghanians and i'm just like where's the pride in your country which i understand there's pros and cons to everything but i love ghana because of the culture because of the people because of the food obviously because <laughs> because of the the potential that's in this country uh, because of the opportunities that it can offer because of yeah I think I mentioned people already the people yeah. are amazing um, yeah and I'm the expecting lifestyle. you to say food but you're not mentioning food oh I said food you said food yeah what kind of food oh I love local food I love Benkwino Mm -hmm. I love Diehu, <laughs> Mutu. You're already eating Diehu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love all okay. of it. Okay, that's nice. So, when, when, when should we come to your kitchen so that you prepare? <laughs> Don't worry. For now, just follow my cooking page on Instagram. I just uh, started one, so I make recipes and stuff. Okay. Um, it's called in the kitchen underscore with true love or okay. with true yeah but wait let's talk, let's talk about this true love why 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 did your parents give you true love like i want to know why because uh, you know i think i was calling you somebody saw your kind of somebody hey you found true love <laughs> i said no there's somebody that i work with there's a colleague he said oh, are you sure say yes so please explain <laughs> Why do you love? Um, see, my dad, once you meet my dad, you'll understand. My dad is such like a positive man, and he's a man of God. He's an elder in the Church of Pentecost. Oh, and okay. Yeah, so God's love is true. That's basically the name of my, the meaning of my name. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, when, like, friends or whatever put my name in their phone, I'm just like, especially guys, I'm like, just put true. I don't want no while. Like, <laughs> just put true. <laughs> Because you're already giving us wahala, serious wahala, it's, it's, it's too dangerous. Okay, it's been nice. And what has been your worst experience so far since you got to Ghana? Worst yeah. experience? Yeah. Let me think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I was going to uh, the interview for work, <laughs> and my Uber driver, or Bolt driver, I think it was Uber Bolt. He heard my American accent, you know, we were having a conversation, I'm jamming in the car, like I love music. And he's like, oh, open, open, no. And I'm like, yeah. So I thought we were cool. And then he started taking longer way, started delaying. I'm like, hey, I have somewhere to be, like, go me. And he stopped. He's like, oh, I need a charger. He would stop. Yeah. And I'm like, my cousin was in the back and she's like, do you think he's doing this on purpose? Because he knows we're from America and just wants to like delay the time. And I was like, no, it can't be. But as time kept going, he would stop. He's like, let me ask somebody for directions. I'm like, I have it on my phone, you can follow. He's like, no, let me just ask somebody so we will park. Just delaying the time. And we got there, it was originally 60 cities. It ended up being almost 100 cities. So that was a bad experience because I'm like, advantage of the fact that I'm not from here <laughs> so yeah I would say that's my worst experience yeah. oh I can't speak for those those guys because normally yeah. I, I don't know I don't know because I was there that day yeah. and I really felt bad about it because there's a map he just had to use the map but yeah I wouldn't say anything so what's the best experience so far Ooh, best experience. Yeah. there's a lot of those I'm cultivating. Okay. Um, I've been meeting a lot of amazing people. I've met um, some some artists who are amazing in their work. I've met some musicians who are amazing in their work. I've met um, just my auntie has a store in front of her house, and um, I help sometimes. And just the people that come in, they're just so kind. My my best experience is literally every day when I meet people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. When you look at life in America now, I'm talking about now, life in America, are you talking about how you, people are very friendly here in Ghana and America? How, how do you see the relations? Do you think it's harder over there and it's easier over here? 
in terms of what? In, in terms of uh, living and in terms of human relations, like you communicating with people, is it like that over there? We meet people, you can say oh, hi, like you talk cool with them, or everybody's like, hi. <laughs> Uh, how is that? Um, well, honestly, Ghana is very communal. Um, and I keep saying like the people are friendly and open. It's not like that in America so much because it's more of a um, self, or what is the word, like... Self-development or something like that. Yeah, it's like, not a selfish, but you're more worried about yourself, what you got going on. Like, you leave the house when you're 18, you're on your own, it's more like, you have to fend for yourself, opposed to in Ghana, like you have a community that you raised, you, you were raised, and you have your family. If you need something, you can always, in times of need, you can go to your mom's house. You can okay. go to, yeah. And then in America, people just have so much, so much stress, so much bills. No one's worried about like going out of their way to, I don't know, communicate unnecessarily. Like neighbors. Unless it's like select group of neighborhoods, they don't really go out and just be like, hey neighbor. It's just too much pressure and stress there for people mm. to really like enjoy each other's company. Yeah. I don't know why you want to stay in Ghana. Yeah, because I'm very social. I love people. So, and then it also, for me, it's refreshing being around everyone that looks like me. Okay. Yeah. Talking about being around how. You know, people who look like you, and then, you know, being there with the people that don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't look like you. Have you had any experience? But most of the people, okay, it's only one person that I've actually had a conversation with that had one experience. He said, in, in school, they used to look uh, down upon her because they, I think she, they were just only three black girls in the class or something like that so she has some bad experience have you had that before um honestly growing up the community that i was raised in was very um diverse um so i didn't have i honestly didn't even know that what colors were because we didn't really have that kind of environment everyone was the same at least from my perception okay um, and then I had my community of Ghanaians when I went to church and then I came home so it's like I knew said like I'm not from here but it's okay I have my people that you know I'm in my community but it wasn't until I got to college when I'll be in a class of like 200 students and I'm literally the only black person yeah and that continued on but I, I do notice a pattern in my life, like in elementary school up until middle school, high school, there was some select classes that I would be the only black person, or I would be the only black person doing this sort of thing, like marching band. There's not a lot of, too many black people that do marching band. And even to, to make it smaller, African. Yeah, so I'll usually be the only African, but this is kind of embarrassing, but when I was in high school, um, at that time, Africa had a bad connotation. Like, it had a negative, like, <laughs> like perception on it. So I would tell people I was from Jamaica. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Because I would hear them making fun of other kids, uh, African booty scratch all that, and I'm like, mm, I'm not trying to deal with that. I'm like, yeah, I'm from Jamaica. That's where my family's from. But now, like, I've gotten to the point of maturity where I'm just like, I'm embracing who I am. I'm, I'm proud of where I'm from. And I think that's another reason why I love being here so much, because I get to explore so much of my culture. But, yeah, back to that question. So, in college, that's when I started seeing that. And then, when I um, was working at the radio station, I was the only black woman. And was, I was the youngest. Wow. And then, even at the opera, I was the only black girl, and I was the youngest, yeah. So I see myself in those spaces often. Um, okay. Yeah. But does that have any sort of influence on you? Does it scare you, or you're confident? And you're like, okay, I'm the only one here like that, so I'll do, I'll give my best. Yeah, it was like that for me, uh, growing up all throughout, like, I'm like, I'm here because I deserve to be here. There's nothing, okay. you know, no, nothing like my color can, even when people have diff their experiences where it's like racism, blah, 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 by the grace of God, I've never had to experience that. Um, 
it wasn't until my most recent job at the opera, because opera is very like, um, it's very highbrow. It has that um, that kind of I don't know stereotype around it that mm -hmm. is just like for really wealthy people. Da da da. So being in that environment, I felt a little out of place. I stuck. I struggled with imposter syndrome, where it was like, do I really deserve to be here? And the truth of the fact was, I did because I went through four stages of interviews, okay. and I had other people that were competing for the same role and they chose me but in that time I was just so frozen in that like oh my god I'm the only person here am I doing enough I have to do more and I didn't even have to looking back at it I'm like wow I was stressing myself for no reason I was doing an amazing job and they kept reaffirming that mm -hmm. but it was just what I believed at that time yeah I was struggling with that okay um, lastly, when you hear those stories, uh, this black person has been shot, uh, they are being racist on black people, and then you go out you're on the streets, how do you feel? Does that scare you? Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. I was actually talking to somebody about this and saying that like, when I go to the movies, something as fun as the movies I once enjoyed, now when I go, I look around and see like, is there a potential threat? Is somebody gonna come in and do something? Or when I'm driving, I have to make sure that everything is on point so that if I get stopped, there's not gonna be any like, you know, <laughs> unnecessary altercations. But um, it does scare me a little bit, but not too much. I think it's worse for the men, the black men. Yeah, but. It's worse for the black men. Yeah, in my opinion. Oh. Yeah, but equally, just like as a black, you know, collective, it's hard. Um, excuse me a little bit, but everywhere you go, you know, something can happen, so it's a potential threat anywhere. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. So, we are still here at a delish restaurant, and we are talking to uh, the Ghanaian. Jamaican. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, you've renounced America, right? Huh? Have you renounced America? Oh no, not yet, not yet. Not yet, not okay. Yet. So, still American. True love. Um, uh, true love, that's her name. Not my true love. So that people won't come and say, because uh, I know people are going to be in the comment section. <laughs> true love, true love, true love, true love. So, it's nice meeting you. And then you skipped one thing that I'm still going to bring you back to. Uh -oh. Okay. So when I met her, she said she does a little bit of singing. Oh my god. And you forgot about that part, so I want to know a little bit about your singing or your music. Should I say music career or singing career? Okay. Yeah. So and singing. So as young as I can remember, I would always um, come up with songs and record it on my phone. Okay. And I remember my siblings, actually, I forgot at one point, my siblings would remind me, like, remember when you used to do that? And I was like, oh yeah, it was fun. But I was heavily involved in church growing up, since my dad's like an elder, and he started a, a, a lot of churches in Michigan, where we were staying. And so when he would start the church, it would obviously start small, and I would be a part of like the worship team, okay. praises. So that's where I started like really singing. Um, and as I grew older, I just kept serving in the church in that way. Um, but yeah, it's not, and I sing in school, in high school, I was a part of the choir. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> I was a part of the choir at school, and then that introduced me to different types of singing. Okay. And then I did theater, and so it was acting and singing, so um, that was fun. And then opera is just being around music okay. and singing in a different way. So it introduced me to a different form of singing and different art form of singing. Um, yeah, it's nothing that I take too seriously right now. It's just something that I use um, to serve God at church. Um, Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, you know, am, I have sold out concerts in my shower with an audience of one. So. <laughs> I do enjoy that. Okay. So when are you going to invite us to your concert? <laughs> that one's closed. <laughs> closed How about you, it's a private concert. You're, you're sure you're going to give us an acapella, right? No, I'm sorry. Why? It's Shahu. 
the camera on me. I can I can leave. No, I'm sorry, I have a camera. I'm not ready to. Uh, I'm not ready to share that. You know, you know for God, don't do that. For God, oh. wait for God. At least for God. Okay. Um, no, I can't. <laughs> I know you can. I can. <laughs> But not right now. Not right now. Yeah. So we should we should put the whole interview on hold for another day. Cause I need that bit. Okay. For my promo. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can put the whole. Interview <laughs> on hold. Okay. So it's been nice talking to you. Your experiences and all that. It's been informative. And we are looking forward to having you again. I would love that. Yeah. Social media handles. Oh, you don't um, for people to follow oh, you. Check follow you out. me. Um, I love that. Your underscore underscore true love. So Y O U R underscore underscore T R U E L O V E. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's nice having you on the African Voice of China. And I'm Thomas Pamford, and she is uh, Akushia Ahen True Love.